Okay, my friends, this is going to be fun. Everybody knows Caesar. All right, he's my buddy. He's a goose. And uh, he petrified in the mud fossil manner. Even his feather pattern and everything is still visible. And all of the outside membranes, coating, skin, everything that is, is outside of you on the edges is made of collagens. And collagens turn into feldspar. The inside is not feldspar. And his artery that runs up to his head to feed it with blood was filled still with blood because it, it broke off. I don't know, I must have broken it off when I found it or I don't know, it was laying like this, whatever. I can't remember, it was a long time ago. But the, the neck is still is in here. And if you know how to look at the patterns and so forth, you can see that it's in there. And when you look in the uh, microscope. Now, we're gonna look at actually, this is the best thing that could happen. Catalase is in the blood and it's a reactive enzyme. It creates oxygen like just unbelievable amounts, but it's only found in, it's a common enzyme that's found in nearly all living organisms. Living organisms. The catalase decomposition of hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen. Very important enzyme. Enzyme. Bacteria is the factory of the enzymes. So if this is filled with blood, this artery, could the enzyme still be active? Well, if we put hydrogen peroxide on there, will it exude oxygen and turn it into water? Guess what? Yes, it will. And I can show you that in a microscope right now. So not only can we prove my mud fossils are real, and Augustus Caesar here is a real goose, and was living at one time, and still has catalase in it and blood, that we should be able to demonstrate if what I'm showing is true. And at the same time, we can understand if you don't have the right bacteria, you're not going to get catalase. All right, if you have weak bacteria, because the bacteria create the enzyme, the enzymes are only created from bacteria. Bacteria is the factories. So whatever the, the enzyme you need, and there's thousands of them, because they are nothing more than a very, very, very exotic chemistry set. I mean, look at this. This is catalase. And that's, it squirts out all in this big, long string of codes. And if it's not just exactly like that, it doesn't do the job. And it's magnetically attracted. They call it magnetotactic bacterial now. Uh, it, uh, the, well, anyway, the, it gets a little deep, but trust me, this is not just squirted out from anywhere. So if Caesar, my good friend here, starts spewing out oxygen, we are going to know that it was loaded with catalase. And if it was loaded with catalase, he was alive, or she. All right, this is the microscope. That is the artery. And we're going to be looking at it up here. I have to turn the lights down right now. It's going to be kind of hard. Well, it's. I left it up like this so you can see something. You see all these scratches in here? I take, whenever I look at the blood and so forth, I got a couple different types of microscopes. I scratch it all out and take it out of there. So what you're looking at there, that red spot, I believe is going to be where the artery area is. This is, it appears that they feed up like a tube, and I believe this is the vein side coming back. But we should see blood everywhere here, because we should see catalase reactions. But primarily you should see it from where the, the source of the blood is, which is the artery or the vein. So, I have to turn the lights down. Let's get ready. All right, listen to this. This is a little bit technical, but not much. Catalase, as you will see in a second, is a common enzyme found in nearly all living organisms exposed to oxygen. It's found in bacteria, plants, animals, the whole nine yards. Living things. It catalyzes the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen and releases an oxygen bubble. It's very important enzyme in protecting the cell from oxidative damage by reactive oxygen species, ROS. All right, catalase 
has one of the highest turnover numbers, wait do you hear this, of all enzymes. Enzymes make things go faster, that's all they do. They, they do normal chemistry, but they make it like on rocket ship speed. One single catalase molecule can convert millions of hydrogen peroxide molecules to water and oxygen each second. And you're going to see this actually happen. Where do you see it? It just flipped my mind out. I couldn't believe it. Somebody told me to try it on my mud fossils, and I did. And it just, as you're going to see, using my good friend here, Caesar. All right, Caesar, you don't mind, do you, buddy? Nope. Okay, thanks. Now, what do we got? Catalase is a tetramer. Four poly, polypeptide chains. Each of them have more than 500 amino acids <laughs> in a chain. It contains four iron-containing hemigroups. And that's where you get your mag magnetobacteria, I believe. Allow the enzyme to react with hydrogen peroxide. The optimum pH for human catalase is approximately 7. Uh, and then it goes on to talk about different things. Now, let's see it actually happen. And we're going to see it option in my friend there, Augustus Caesar. We're going to be looking right there at his artery. And here it is right there in the scope. And now we've got to turn the lights on. Hello. See the white stuff starting to show up? That's all hydrogen peroxide. You see it bubbling? I'm going to come right down on top of it. Hold on. All right. This is really very interesting. This is the fluid-filled highway. That's the interstitial. Look at it moving that layer. I didn't realize that was happening. Look at look at look at it go. That's the layer that has all of the reactive oxygens. Now there's a bunch of it coming out of here and all these other places too. But that is the layer. Now I'm seeing something I missed the other day. Let me see if I can focus in on that. That's incredible. That is the interstitial layer. That's amazing. I find something new every single time. It never, ever fails. Okay, within like 30 seconds, all of the oxygen was gone. Now, let's put some more hydrogen peroxide in there. This converts something that you just saw is highly reactive, millions of times a second. Let's put some more in and see if we can get more reaction. All right, there's, look at it, look at it, come out, look at that. Look at the reactive oxygen being bubbled off of that interstitial layer. That's the key now. Now I got something to look at. But you see that? That's before I told you where the red spot was. All right, it's converting all that over and it'll turn it right into oxygen. Let's just watch it complete its process. You're looking at bubbling out of the, the arteries, really, and veins, probably, wherever they are. These feed these interstitial layers. And these are the membrane layers. You see that? That's exactly what they are. They're membrane layers. That is amazing. And they call it the fluid-filled highway now, the interstitial. Look at that stuff bubble. Because these, these little tiny things, if, you, if we could get really way down close, and I don't know if I can or not, but this is going to take a second to do, so let me get as close as I can possibly get. Look at that. Isn't that fascinating? <laughs> it is to me. Look at that. All of that is membrane. Around, you see this? This is all around the vascular network. And that is the interstitial layer. And they said it was a fluid-filled highway, and it's apparently fluid-filled with 
catalase. Well, there's a, there's a lot of catalase in there because we see it re reacting. Now, you see how it's almost starting to finish up reacting with the, uh, the um, uh, hydrogen peroxide, the catalase, is that, that reaction is now really coming close to an end. And before long, gone, it'll just be gone. And it'll look like it, somebody just had put water on there. That is just incredible. Now, if I put more catalase, I mean more hydrogen peroxide on there, it would come back and start reacting again. This stuff is so incredibly reactive. Look, now it just looks like water. You wouldn't know it was bubbling off anymore. You see it? Basically done now. Now, let me focus in just so we can get a little closer if we can. That's as close as we're going to get. Now, let me see if I can. Uh, there we go. There we go. Now, don't forget, where are our membranes? They're around the edges. Where's our interstitium? It's up here. Uh, I can't really get to that too much. But we can see that's the interstitial layer. Now, we're going to put some more hydrogen peroxide on. Look at, right now, you have no idea that that was nothing other than water. Now, here comes the hydrogen peroxide. So, it will find some more catalase to do this. Look at it. Boom. It was just like a rocket ship. It's all over this stuff. Look at it. Isn't that something? I am just shocked. I gotta back this off. There we go. Look at that. Now the flashy stuff here, that's the lights shining down on it, reflecting off the surface. But this is from the interstitial. Absolutely phenomenal. And that, again, you see it? Right there, that's the membrane. So these are membrane areas. That's another day in paradise. Absolutely incredible. And at, you can see how much reactivity. And they're right about the, how fast it works. Here's what it says about it right there. You can read it yourself convert millions of hydrogen peroxide molecules to water a single one of those catalase ones so I don't know how much is there but it seems like there's a hell of a lot of catalase or there's just maybe one or two I don't know it could convert millions in per second so that's there could be not a ton of it there or it could be quite a bit but I can tell you where it's pr primarily resides is in these layers which are the membranes so i have a whole new area of investigation